the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Today we celebrate St. Francis, probably one of the most popular and well-known saints. Born in 1182 in Assisi, he was the son of the prosperous cloth merchant. He was known as a wild and spoiled young man. I love that. <laughs> he left school at the age of 14, partying, breaking the city curfew. His dream was to be a knight, to be a war hero. In 1202, war broke out between Assisi and Perugia. And in that battle, Francis was captured by the enemy and spent the next year in captivity. His father ransomed him and they returned to Assisi. But Francis had changed in that year. It is said he was riding a horse in the countryside when he encountered a leper. Francis stopped and embraced and kissed him, something that was definitely not done. To Francis, that act bestowed on, the, on him the gift of freedom, incredible freedom. He began spending more time in a mountain hideaway and in the old quiet churches around Assisi. It was in the church of San Damiano that he heard the voice of Christ saying to him, rebuild my church. To help finance the reconstruction of that church, Francis sold a bolt of his father's cloth. His father demanded he return the money he had received and eventually brought Francis before the bishop who told Francis to give the money back to his father. Francis stripped off his clothes and gave both his clothes and the money to his father. The bishop gave Francis a rough tunic to wear, marking a new life for Francis. This new life was one of renunciation of material wealth and dedication to serving the poor. As he walked the countryside, Francis served and preached and taught both humans and animals, identifying with the sufferings of Christ, and in all this, showing an unconquerable joy, especially in the creation, hence the connection between St. Francis and animals, which we observe today. We see that joyous faith in one of the few writings we have of his. Ray is going to play a setting of this during communion. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, to thee be ceaseless praise outpoured and blessing without measure. Let creatures all give thanks to thee and serve in great humility. It's hymn 407 if you want to read the rest of the piece. When you hear the stories of St. Francis and the other saints, do you ever wonder how they manage all they have done? It often seems so far away from our lives, from anything we might do anything we might be called to do. Where do they find the courage, the faith? We look at their lives and it seems so hard, the burden so great. And we look at our lives. Our burdens are perhaps not the same as St. Francis and the other saints, but we do carry burdens. We are weary. Some days are really difficult. Some things going on in our lives are hard and seem hopeless. How do we manage? In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus invites us to come to him with our weariness and our burdens, and he will give us rest. He invites us to take his yoke upon us, which seems on the surface contradictory. Why would we want to put a yoke on our shoulders? A yoke is for a donkey or for oxen, a collar that harnesses the animal for whatever work it is to do pulling a cart, plowing a field. A yoke is a symbol of servitude and onerous labor, nothing we would want to sign up for. But the yoke, in the context of this gospel lesson, was the common, common symbol for the law of Moses, especially for the details of the law and the minute, ever-expanding demands of the legalism of the Pharisees. Not all of the Pharisees, mind you, but Jesus singles some of them out. This yoke demands that you do this and this and this exactly right in order to matter to God, in order to be a decent person, in order to be loved or counted significant. This is the yoke that Jesus rejects. This is the yoke 
that is heavy laden. This is the yoke that leads to a religion and a life of fearful obedience to a multitude of laws and assumptions. It would be like saying to your child or your spouse, I will love you only if you do everything right. Not the best basis for a relationship. To live by the notion that if we could only figure out the right things to do, the right way to act, the right words to say, the right way to do all the rituals, then we would be all right. To do all that is to skate on the edge of magic, as if we could conjure up God's acceptance. God's presence with us and God's love for us are not the result of our actions. God is in charge. We are not. And to all this, Jesus says, come to me. Come to me and you will find rest. You will abide in me. I see Francis here, giving up some of the expectations of his time, taking on a life of poverty and service, and able to do that because he was learning from Jesus, gentle and humble in heart, and he was sustained by Jesus. Jesus made his burden light. One of the things I love about scripture is that we get to look at it and think about it and walk around it and look again. A warning. This next couple of sentences comes from a kid who grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey, where there were not a lot of oxen or donkeys. But here it is. When I hear the word yoke, I usually think of it as an onerous thing and something I would not want to take on. But what if we thought of it as a helpful thing? Two animals linked together could more easily plow the field or carry the harvest or pull the wagon. Neither animal has to bear the whole load, accomplish the whole task. Sharing the load makes it work. We do not move through life alone. Paul is right on when he says, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. We are yoked with Jesus, and nothing can take that away. That gives us the strength to live, to do whatever it is we are called to do, because Jesus is here with us. Listen to the same verses in The Messenger, which is a modern English paraphrase of the Bible. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. May we this day learn to live freely and lightly, walking with Jesus, embraced by his love. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.